Hang on. Hang on. Go. Hey. Sorry. Hello, everyone. I'm Partha Aji. Uh, yeah, my GitHub handle there. I see. I'm a. I work for Cutello Foreman Project. Like I'm uh, one of the developers who've been there, who's been there for a long time, along with David and others here. David, uh, uh, Grant, pretty much everyone here. Uh, let me do the next slide. So I, I, I think you all saw the presentation of Ian three days ago, where he went on a deep dive on how Cutello uses. Foreman, uh, how Foreman and Catello uses pulp, uh, but I'll, uh, so is we Foreman basically is a tool that uh, Foreman tool we use it for content management, configuration, provisioning, and monitoring, and pulp serves as as, as the backbone for the con content part. Uh, we use we heavily rely on pulp for pretty much all the important content related items. Oh, yeah. so, Again, yeah, I want to show this. There's the Foreman. There's Catello, which is a which is the content plug uh, content plugin to Foreman, and Catello is responsible to talk to like Candlepin and Pulp projects. Uh, it uses Pulp to get our, manage RPMs. It uses Candlepin to manage subscriptions. Yeah. So now comes the interesting part. Uh, here's the problem we are trying to solve that I. That was a quick introduction. Uh, if you need more, please watch uh, Ian's big one uh, on Monday. Uh, but here's the problem that we are trying to solve. It's a really basic problem. So I have I have a Foreman server here, and I have a disconnected line here. This is supposed to be a dis this is supposed to be an air gap network. So there's nothing between this. And so, so the idea is we are trying to export content from the upstream Foreman server, and somehow import con import that into downstream server, and so, uh, without a network in the middle. So what will happen is it'll export content to different formats. The user is then I don't know, uh, taking a USB, flying somewhere, going to the secure installation. Applying, applying, uh, uh, importing the same content into downstream. Uh, we, 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 we've had this for a while, uh, but Pulp three made it uh, much easier and actually much, uh, quite uh, much better in my opinion. But uh, so, and there's this slight variation here. Again, it's not my, very different from the previous one. Here is the there's a web server here, so some. So the idea here is again I exported a tart GZ or whatever whatever format. It got copied to a web server on the other side and yeah, different the there are different uh, foreman servers that are willing to sync from this, pull from this. So uh, those are like the two scenarios you're trying to work with. So to facilitate this, I'll uh, pulp has these exporters. Uh, we uh, the default one is called the pulp exporter uh, because we, we didn't have a I, I I call it the core exporter, but the pulp exporter is probably better, as Grant pointed out. Uh, and this is the default format that even we use in Cutello. Like we are, when we say export a repository to something, we use the default form. We use the default format, or we call it the importable format, if you will. Uh, because it's generating an export, and then you use that to import on a different server. Uh, it's available for YUM, file, container, Sensible. Uh, am I missing anything here? We, those are the four I know of uh, that we, we support, at least. Uh, so one of the beauties of these, uh, the, the pulp exporter, is it supports both regular and incremental exports. Uh, I'll, I'm going to demo in a couple of seconds, so you'll, you'll probably get a clear picture then. But I'm just I'm just going to over quickly here so that I can jump to the demo. Uh, so this facilitates both regular and incremental export. So you can give it like when you create the pulp exporter. Um, and uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, pulp exporter export actual pulp model entity. So I think it's using the Django framework to 
do a lot of some of the work there. Yeah, uh, one of the nice things about uh, Pulp as a single is it does both regular and incremental export. So what happens is you, when you create an export, you say, hey, here's the I want the I want the this repository version. Repo this this repository at this version to be exported to this directory. And then I want to say, hey, you know what? This is the start version. Only give me the differences between so so if I had like if I was on version five, if I asked the I can I can ask Paul to export from zero to five, or I can ask Paul from exporting from four to five version. Like it's a, it's like so we have it gives us control on that, which which makes a lot of things easier. Yeah. Uh, the scenario for incremental is let's say I exported like a rel or some rel seven. I think it's I think rel seven is fifty gigabytes uh, when you export, uh, and let's say couple of days later two packages changed i only want the deltas i don't want i don't want to re-export the full thing again i only want the 100 <laughs> 100 megabytes or whatever that changed uh, to get exported so incremental facilitates that and pulp beautifully solves it by using versions and it's kind of a it's kind of a change set that's built into pulp which makes which we leverage here uh, so the, once we the export pro process starts, uh, the default one it, it copies this to disks, the, the artifacts to disk, compresses them. Uh, so for example, for, so you at least need twice the space. So if I had a, if I was if I had a rel seven and I was going to export it, I need I need more more than twice the space, but at least that like. Uh, so it, it exports them and puts them in a tar file, tar -GZ file. And you can also say things like, you know, hey, I have, I'm exporting, a, I don't want to, I want, I want it to be chunked. Like I don't want a 50 GB tar -GZ file here. I want 10, uh, like four, I want, I want them in the four GB slabs. So you can, you can chunk things with that. Uh, and then of course users can, so what will happen is it will then pass over the disconnected network. Like someone will take, put it in a USB, copy it to the import machines, and then users can just import this, you know, the pulp instance. Uh, and one of the one of the interesting thing pul things pulp does is it adds checksums to each of these files. Like so, if I had a chunkable, uh, if I had a chunkable export, so there'll be there's a file called toc.json that has that has like the checksum information uh, for each of these. So when I'm importing, it will verify that the checksums match. Otherwise, it won't import. So, it, so there's some built-in uh, safeguards uh, that are useful. Uh, and so one of the one of the things the regular pulp exporter does is it, it the 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 exported content is in a tar GC. And if you if you expanded the tar GC, you will see that it's it's using the pulp structure like what well, it's not using it's not using it doesn't look it doesn't resemble like the like the rpm the yum repo that you synced it does not resemble that it it's all it's all broken into artifacts and neatly packaged and uh, pulp is doing its own thing so it's the original intent was we'll have a pulp server here like we'll have a pulp server on the uh, up, upstream uh, okay or oh, maybe i'll correct that once again this is, I'm just letting you know, this is called upstream, this side and downstream before I, I think. And so I'm copying content from upstream to downstream. So think of it that way. Uh, right. So one of the, one of the things with pulp is that the upstream and the downstream pulp versions have to match if at least till, at least till the X dot Y. Like, so I, th I think 3.39 is the later, 3.40 is probably latest. So if I, if I was, if my upstream server exported it in 3.40, I can end my down, or, or I mean, my downstream was 3.39, it won't work. So you have to, have, the, that server also has to be upgraded to 3.40 before I can export it, uh, before I can import it. Um, we, 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 we used, so, but I think for minor versions, it's okay. So if I, so if I had, 
3.21.5 if i exported that i can import it into 3.214 like we pulp doesn't uh, uh, break that we we don't we we intentionally have that versioning concept so that it's consistent over time and it's important to be consistent in in a lot of these installations so yeah here's the example i was showing so i i did an export uh, ignore the directory structure but i exported into this directory and you will see that oh okay you'll see that there's a targz there's a, a json file uh this is this metadata json is added by catello so you can ignore that uh, but the export toc json has the checksums and all that all the jazz built in uh and there have been it's, uh, there have been a lot of performance improvements lately like even even like last week last couple of weeks i i know i know the pulp team is running on a is is trying to like you know make this even more uh, quicker and better uh, so I'm, I'm really thankful for that uh, so one of the drawbacks of this is you see that this is this doesn't resemble a yum repo right so a lot of a lot of our users uh, oh, what they do is so it's, it's like let's say secure installation what what they do is they want they want control on the data that's getting exported so they they'll export like 100 things and they want only a subset to get copied they want control on managing how those rpms look or they want the structures look so they may, they may regenerate metadata if needed like they'll they'll do things like that uh, before sending over uh so paul introduced uh, i think i think uh, i think david davis if i remember if i'm right <laughs> introduced the initial file system exporter david davis and grant of course uh so the so we call so they introduced something called a file system exporter. And we actually call it the syncable format in Catello. So the idea here is like and it's available for yum and file. Yeah, available for yum and file. What this does is uh, it what it, it the the export behavior is similar. So you create an exporter directory repository versions blah 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 like so it does supports both incremental and regular exports uh, but one difference that we have here is this one hard links artifacts to disk so let's say i i exported something from pulp like let's say i exported rel 7 what will happen is it'll 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 export to this directory but it'll try to make hard links Unless the hard, unless the export directory is in a different partition, that's the provision. So, so in theory, it's going to take. It's not going to take two extra space. It's probably going to take maybe maybe a couple of kilobytes more because it's all sim linked uh, to pulp implements. Um, and one of the pretty good one of the things that this, like people really appreciate is ex it, the export structure resembles. The source feed uh, uh, of for YAML or file repo. I'll I'll just I can maybe I can show you here. Yes, yeah. For example, here is a sample export that I have for uh, via the syncable format, and you see how it's like it looks like a YAM repo. Uh, I'm having a space it's here. A, so. it, it is a YAM repo, Partha. Yeah, because it includes the you include the metadata, right? Yes. Yes, so it, does. It's, it, it is, in fact, a yum repo that you've implemented there that you export. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. So the idea here is so the user from the other side, you know, the downstream user can then just pull content from this yum repo, like just like a standard yum repo, like they can create and sync or mirror. Uh, so whenever you perform an export with the file system exporter. Does it export the metadata every time? Yes, it does. Okay. So even so, the that's one of the recent changes. So we even for both for regular and incre for incremental, in, in fact, 
exports all the repo, all the stuff in the repo data directory, like uh, completely. So that so the idea is, you know, hey, as a user, I got the deltas, I can copy it, and then just run a sync operation on it, and I'll I'll still get the new metadata. I'll also get the the changes in the repo, and it's not as big. Yeah. Uh, and so what I'm hearing here mm -hmm. is that you could be exporting this to like some shared file system or something yes. that's actually like in another geography. Um, and then you have a server that's serving these RPM repos. Yes. And you're just incrementally publishing them there. That's, that's no, yeah, that's, that's well stated. Yeah, that's exactly how it is. Uh, one, so, we we initially called the syncable because we said users should create and sync, but we we have also added bindings in Catello now, so you can just say import from this web server, and it knows that hey, this is a syncable format. Let me let me just create repositories and sync it. Uh, go ahead, Ben. Go ahead. Uh yeah, my question is, um, did I understand it correctly? So the export just kind of dumps a yeah, RPM repo. repo on disk, and then yeah. you have to serve it somewhere in order to sync it. Yes. So Correct. that's up to the user how they serve that RPM repository. Exactly. OK. It might be just on a hard drive that they carry into a disconnected environment and then hook it up you know, to a web server there. And the pulp, uh, pulp syncs it from there. But what I was proposing is that you just export it to a machine that can serve it from somewhere. We, that is also possible here. That yeah. that definitely is possible. Uh, in fact, I, I was yeah, I could I guess I could demo that in theory. Uh, will but I the one go ahead. Time will be an issue. Let's yeah, I was gonna say let's not derail your talk. <laughs> yeah, okay, keep going, Martha. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll quickly finish and then can I have this area of question. So there's no, and it's this tends to be faster than regular expression than regular export. Sorry, regular expression. <laughs> okay, this tends to be faster than regular export uh, because we are doing symlinks here and not copying things. But I mean, this is the apples and oranges comparison. So the file system exporter like exports. Uh, like like does sim links, but it doesn't do anything like start GZing or any sort of compression. So that time is not really incurred. Uh, so it it kind of deceptively looks much faster, but I'm guessing in reality, it just puts the cost of uh, to compressing and copying it over to the user. That's that's all it does. Well, as Daniel pointed out earlier, we stopped doing the compression now on the regular exporters because it was not actually adding that much, much value yeah. but it was taking up a lot of time yeah yeah that's, that's a good point uh yeah there's no extra checks and all this like it's a yum repo so hopefully your the checksum detection happens there when you're syncing and yeah here's here's like the example tree that looks like this uh do we uh how much time do i have do i have like a couple of minutes for demo or uh technically we're supposed to be done at 25 after but we've been pushing everything all the way up to the end of the half an hour so you have either 30 seconds or five minutes and 30 seconds <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go ahead, uh, I, okay go ahead. you gave us five minutes take it back go for it <laughs> uh yeah sorry uh let me do this of sharing and so this uh, right hold on this call yeah this one this guy sorry so are you able to see my let me see i'm sharing something uh we just see your slides oh okay i'm sorry uh Okay, may, maybe. Share your whole desktop. Be brave. We try this again. I guess it. I I wanted to share a new. Oh, not a tab, a window. Okay, ah, that makes sense. Ah, I need to be smarter. Okay, did you, are you guys able to see my? 
Criminal? Yes, we are. There you go. Oh, yeah. And your font's pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've set it up for the demo, so it's amazing. It's like really. And also helps with my eyes, you know, and my eyesight is bad. So, anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, here is an example. So, here we have in Catello, we have like this product. I just. Uh, and so it has like three repositories. One is a file, one is Catello. One, one, like three of them are yum, basically. One is file. Uh, so I, I think I showed you the export structure. So we, we for example, just say, so let's say hammer, non planet export, complete uh, repository. So if we are trying to export a repository, we have like, like I said, I know, get the idea of this is three again. Okay. So this should be exported in the standard format. Uh, so what it's doing is it's creating an exporter in pulp and it's creating the export also in pulp. It is uh, pointing to the, it's saying do a full export. Complete means it's saying the start version is nil, so it's it's like a zero to zero to five or whatever whatever number it is. So like that that's what we are exporting. So we get the full thing here, and if I do like a tree on this. Yeah, this is what I think we all I already pasted this, but it looks like that, and you can I'll, I can just mm -hmm. click on this. Uh, Oh, uh, export and So, so I have a question. These uh -huh. files that we see there, the export files, are they all pulp, or is any of that Catello? Metadata that JSON is Catello. Catello. The pulp, yeah. The TOC and the tar GZ are pulp. Okay. And there's yeah. a workflow here, and the Catello is going through using that metadata. It decides how to replace you know to import the pulp pieces into the right repositories um in the right content views on the catello side of things so there's catello um uh workflow happening using this as a as its input data and, yeah and the toc json kind of shows clearly that uh yeah, the POC JSON kind of shows everything here in the picture. Like I chose the hat global hash and all that. So, which pulp will use when I'm when I import it to a different box? Uh, and the only the change we do is we we can if we want the other format, we can say format equals syncable here. Uh, this this should about take about the same time because it's fairly small repo. So let's let's see this guy. Uh, I'll copy this and reset it so that we go to the top. If I do a tree, there you go. Yeah, this is a good report to demo. I didn't realize there's only three RPMs. That's perfect. Okay. <laughs> so you can see that, yeah, you can see the structure here. This looks this is exactly a yum repo. And as a use so Catello uses this metadata JSON file to figure out, hey, what is the repository I need to enable in the upstream? Or what is the repository I need to create in the upstream? And then, then when, you, when you tell it use a particular directory, it'll, it'll do a file colon colon point there. Uh, and we have rules for everything. This needs to be in wireless pulp imports or wireless pulp export, wireless pulp imports because the import path is uh, pulp is like secure that way. Once it wants things in a particular directory for you to be able to import it, uh, that's, that's a more security thing. Uh, yeah, uh, and I can maybe I can I'll just show you quickly this one part. Kieran, while you're doing that part, there, Kieran, you have a question? Yeah, well, it's being answered. I was gonna ask, can we look at the meta that the, the Catello part? There we go. <laughs> oh, okay. So there you go. Uh, you see that 
yeah, we have like organization. We say where we got it from. I don't think we, I don't know why we, oh, we need the base path for some other reason. Uh, but the, this is really, this is actually not that useful for us. Uh, but rest of it, like, we'll, we have all this information on this a yum repo, extra metadata, basically, that Catello needs to figure out. And we every time you export something, we create a content view that's hidden from the user. So the user doesn't see it. But the benefit here with the content view is that you have a we have a version now. And like like let's like say let's say I export, I did a re-export in like two days after I synced and I got new content. Uh so if I did if I let's see. And if I did like uh one 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 last thing then if I did like incremental here. And I'll just show you the file size, hopefully. There, there's no change, right? I'm not saying anything new. There's no new content. So mm -hmm. if I, if I, but if I check what is in this directory, if I did a tree on, I'll reset this and tree on that. See, there's no no RPMs. It's only the metadata right that's down. changed. So we are, yeah, it, that's one of the big features. I think it's, it's a very useful feature, especially if you're doing like rel exports and imports, because those are like 50, 50 gigabytes easily. So it's, <laughs> yeah. let's right, save part, uh, Yeah, that's pretty I much all say it, Well, which is perfect timing, because I have to cut you off, because we're actually two minutes over. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. As always, folk, Partha showed you where you can find him. And if we can convince him to actually create a matrix account, then we can get him into the pulp channels over there. And you can <laughs> nag at him there, too. All right, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>